Welcome back. In today's adventures, we will be looking at Nevada State Historical Markers numbers 181 through 185. Let's start off this trip on US 50 near Spooner Summit. Unfortunately, this marker is no longer there, but luckily an old photo of it buried in frozen mud in a nearby NDOT gravel yard is all I have to show. It's hard to tell if it was removed to widen US 50 or removed to be rewritten, so for now, it'll be added to our missing marker list and hopefully put back in circulation someday soon. So let's take a look at this missing marker, marker number 181, the Washoe Indians. Washoe Indians. Long before the coming of immigrant wagon trains, this site overlooked the lands of the Washoe Indians. A valley, a town, and a county still bear their name. A nearby trail marks their ancient route from the lowlands to Lake Tahoe in California. The Washoe language is distinct from both Shoshone and Paiute. For many years, the Washoe people remained isolated, roaming their native High Sierra and descending into the valleys for winter. Their pine nut ceremony is still held before harvest time, with men and women working together at this enterprise. The departure for the pine nut groves is celebrated by singing and dancing during the pine nut ceremony called Gumsabi. Their basketry, now world famous, is one aspect of Washoe culture that has been preserved for generations. The beautiful work of their most celebrated artist, Datso Lali, is exhibited in the Nevada State Museum, Carson City, and the Nevada Historical Society, Reno, with along with other equally talented basket weaver exhibits. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 181. Now, let's drive 435 miles southeast back to the town of Panaka. Located next to the newer LDS Meeting House and Stake Center on North 4th Street, and about 200 feet northwest of marker number 93 and 600 yards southwest of marker number 160 is our next marker, marker number 182, Panaka Ward Chapel. Panaka Ward Chapel, one of the oldest buildings in Lincoln County. The Panaka Ward Chapel was constructed of adobe from the swamps west of town in 1867-1868. Built as a Mormon chapel, the building was also used as a school and recreation hall. The chapel is typical of the development in small Mormon pioneer communities in the Inner Mountain West during the mid-1800s. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 182. Turning around now, we need to head west to the town of Schurz. Located at the elbow of the Walker River on the corner of Cottonwood and US-95 is our next marker. Centennial Marker, number 183, 1874-1974, Walker River Reservation. Walker River Reservation, 1874-1974 Although the area around Walker Lake in the Utah Territory is set aside for Indian purposes in 1859, it was not until 15 years later that President Grant signed the executive order formally establishing the Walker River Indian Reservation on March 19, 1874. Indian agent Calvin Bateman reported on August 31, 1874 that the reservation is the home of at least 600 Paiutes, who, if absent at all, are only so temporarily. Here the government has promised them an abiding place and justice and honor demand that the compact remain inviolate. I am glad that the executive order reaffirms the obligation and sets at rest the question of its perpetuity. In 1974, over 500 tribal members lived on the reservation. The total land area, including the northern end of Walker Lake, exceeds 300,000 acres, as it did in 1874. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 183. 302 miles back east is our next destination. About 16 miles south of Ely is the Ward Charcoal Oven State Historical Park and our next marker, marker number 184, Ward Charcoal Ovens. Ward Charcoal Ovens. These ovens were constructed during the mid-1870s and are larger and of finer construction than most other ovens found in Nevada. They are 27 feet in diameter and 30 feet high with a capacity of about 35 cords of wood, which was burned for a period of 12 days to produce about 50 bushels of good solid charcoal per cord. The charcoal was used in the smelters at nearby Ward, about 30 to 50 bushels being required to reduce one ton of ore. Each filling of one of these ovens required the total tree crop from five or six acres of land. During the late 1870s, the hills and mountains around many mining camps were completely stripped of all timber for a radius of up to 35 miles. As the railroads penetrated the west, charcoal was replaced by coke, made from coal, and the charcoal industry faded. The real worth of the old charcoal ovens is their historical function in reminding present-day Americans of a now-vanished industry. 
without which the great silver and lead bonanzas of the early West could not have been harvested. Nell Murbarger, Nevada State Historical Marker, number 184. Turning around now, we need to head to Virginia City. Located on State Route 342 near Ophir Grade is a Nevada Department of Transportation maintenance yard and our next marker, marker number 185, McCones Foundries. McCones Foundries. In 1862, Ivy Mead, John McCone, and Mr. Tasker established a foundry at Johntown, two miles southeast of here in Gold Canyon. After two years, they moved their operation to this point and erected a large granite building. John McCone became the sole proprietor of the foundry in 1866. A fire on May 15, 1872, left nothing standing but the walls of the foundry. McCone then bought the Fulton Foundry, built in Virginia City in 1863, McCone made it possibly the largest foundry in the state. The foundry manufactured all the early castings of the Virginia and Truckee Railway. He employed 110 men at its peak. The largest casting in its time poured on the Pacific Coast was made at Fulton's on December 11, 1880. Nevada State Historical Marker, number 185.